Hey there, welcome back to some more Rogue Tower. So last time we did pretty well with some all ballista strat and uh, what do you call this? And uh, the triple threat. So now let's, uh, you know what, so let's take a break from the triple threat and the main or in the double, the two and the three defense. Let's try, let's go back to a single defense and you know to make it fun. I will only build uh, what they call this. I will only, I will only build the tower that will actually first spawn or like first be that will first appear. Okay, so I have three choices here: radar, encampment, flame tower. So honestly. I want to try it, Captain. Okay, your fire rate is 9. Your fire rate is 8. If I place you... Okay, that is useful. What if I just place a lot of encampments? Will that work? I hope that would work. Ooh, did you see that? Okay, so that will be most of my game plan. I will just build encampments from now on. I hope that works. But let's try increase the tower's max health since we will need that. We will really need that. So for now, let's hope my encampment towers will still prove useful. Okay, that went pretty well. Let's deal more damage to armor since that will most likely be our main problem in the later parts of the game and are you a plus three yes you're a plus three you're only a plus two but i think that's enough okay so my problem right now is only a few okay we are dying okay what do you want what do we want honestly right now that's the only building I can do. Now let's try to sell you, place you around here. So let's try to spread out our mines. But my only problem right now is... Like, if you look at this... Okay, well played. If you're looking at this, they are like a single person just detonating a few bombs so that is really a problem for us since you know uh okay so the only way to make this work is to actually place a lot or like i is to actually spread out the mines and hope rng works in our favor that oh no i think i'm gonna lose this Let's just hope that I actually don't. Okay, I think I'm gonna still live. Like, I have time. But I really don't have that much time. Since I am not gaining any gold. You know what? Let's try to spread out some more. Maybe that's a problem. Like so. Let's try to place an uh, encampment tower right there. As you can see, we are actually doing better, I think. Like, yeah, look at this. This is my problem, man. Like, I can't do much. But I hope we can make this somehow work. Like, please, just make this work. 13? Wait, the more... Okay, okay, now it makes more sense. Okay, let's try to sell you. Let's try to just get you. Okay, okay, let's try to do something here. If I place you there, your fire rate is only 7. Place you here, it's 9. Place you here, it's also 9. Place you there, it's 13. Place you there. It's also nine. Okay, 
so this is this will be my game plan let's hope that i will gather enough money to actually uh, survive if i don't survive let's just run it back and let's try another tower or maybe you can get encamp it but i don't think this is a very good strategy unless it's a very long single line like this is really not a very good oh man look at that wait 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 look what if do we still live yeah okay this i think this will work i will you know what since we're just gonna die let's have an experiment here okay let's have enough money please enough gold like so please kill more okay now let's sell you let's place another one okay let's also sell you place another one here let's just stagger them oh wow look at that that actually worked better than i thought but you know uh we died let's just run it back Let's just run it back. Let's try another tower and or hope for another encampment tower. But yeah, why am I doing this? You know, I'm just stressed uh, playing a lot of Elden Ring. Like, you know, when I play Elden Ring, it's like a or like any Souls-like games. It's just a love-hate relationship. Okay. So our only choice of building is Mortar. So might as well put only Mortar. Uh, let's place you there. Let's target the mo you target the most health. And yeah, I think is there a like farthest? No, it's just progress. So I don't think. That we can do anything but let's just hope okay well freaking played most health okay so right now we are not gaining uh fire and flames mm -hmm. you know what let's just use this maybe we can get a buff so as I was saying, like Elden Ring is like a love-hate relationship for me. Since you know you get annoyed that you get uh, progress blocked by some bosses. But what I like about Elden Ring is that given like it's like an open world. Like you can actually explore areas. Uh, yeah, there are some areas that are blocked that is not... Uh, that can't be unlocked when you not progress to a main story. But if you progress to the main story you will actually be amazed or like not really if, like for example if you choose not to progress to the main story there are a lot of side content that you can still access but sometimes you get like you know in typical souls like game fashion you, you will be annoyed when what the heck why do i not have any any other upgrades for a mortar anyway like yeah like you get frustrated when you lose huh? like you when you keep on dying especially the most tilting of all is when you actually like die with a lot of runes or like souls in dark souls or like blood or i don't know but basically when you die because when you die you drop it and when you die again if you didn't pick up it if you didn't pick up, I don't know, excuse me. If you didn't pick up the previous rune, you would be screwed. Okay. What do we want? Uh, honestly, let's have banditry. Or yeah, let's deal more damage first. So that is my thought, like the love and hate relationship, like. However, sometimes if you are, like, if you know, like, you can easily farm uh, the currency in the game. And speaking of currency, what I like about Souls-like games and Elder Ring, like, 
there is like one currency for like all, like a universal currency that what that's what i like about like there's just something about having a uniform currency that makes the game more like it feels easier to manage for me since like you have your own a way to level up you have your own pacing when to level up and you can either invest that on gear or you can invest that on your levels and i just like how because of that like that one currency style you would actually be amazed like it's like it feels like it doesn't feel that not really say that wrong but it doesn't feel that that overwhelming like that's one of the problems in most gacha games is that whenever they like the amount of currency that each gacha game has like it can and, and or not really gacha games for example and let's have a more uh, basic form like for example when you play an RTS like when there are different types of uh what do you call this different types of resources the more varied resources are the more you get overwhelmed that's why for example in 4x games like let's say civilization stellaris it kind of gets overwhelming for new players to see like for example there will be a lot of uh there will be a lot of different resources like from rare to basic and it will be very overwhelming which means it could actually become uh, it will be harder for them for new players to enjoy the game however there's a advantage to that when you play a game with very complex systems and currency it actually f makes the game more complex and sometimes complexity in games is actually a good thing since it can immerse players it can make hardcore players uh, invest on the game they like and it and for example as a player yourself it feels satisfying when you actually when you actually what they call this when you actually understand the mechanics of the game and it's satisfying to see how far you have uh, how far you have reached when it comes to uh, the ability to understand the game like for you can see like for example when you start to learn a game you get overwhelmed and when you <clears throat> excuse me I mean you start to figure out the game you would be satisfied with yourself and you would be amazed by your progress and there's that feeling of success and that feeling of success what makes the player enjoy the game more and which is a very interesting thought in it on its own since it not only the game itself is uh, fun to play but the player is compelled to play the game more it also makes the player who understands the game want to invite other people to try out the game so you can teach them it encourages people it encourages the game to become more uh, community based since it actually uh, what they call this it actually encourages people to teach other players on how to on what to do and that's a very good uh, community idea like for example like when I played uh, what they call this when I played Minecraft in the past like when there was no crafting the only way to figure out the crafting was through community posts like the wiki or like reddit or some or something like that and it's kind of nice how to see people like seeing people interact like also in addition like uh, what are some very good games? like for example in Easter egg hunting games you'd be amazed on how many people are actually collaborating like example in inscription there was a real life uh, uh, Easter egg like an Easter egg in the game that needs you to actually uh, figure out a real life uh like go to a real life coordinates etc etc and figure out some code and yeah that's like that's how you make a game fun like the community of it like example 
in the souls like games and how they create the community like even though the only tip players can get is just to get good you'd be amazed on how many people actually uh how many people actually try to help other players through the multiplayer function and how many people try to invade and since it's in the nature of the game to actually get wrecked or wreck other players like it is it makes the game less mm, less toxic as compared to let's say a competitive game it actually encourages people to collaborate it encourages people to list all the pros and cons it it helps people to figure out what what's a good build what's a not very good build it's just amazing to see the community like that's what makes the some games last for a very long time it's the community since for the most part the commu community is the one that dictates uh most of the trends of the game okay you know what yeah i think we're gonna survive this but we are losing really hard here so i'm not really sure if i can do much here okay never mind my mortars are actually pretty good so yeah that's my thought process like for example aside from community one very great example of community bringing a game or keeping the game alive is through mods many games skyrim rimworld many game many games that have mods fallout uh what else uh, minecraft they can last for a long time with no updates just bug fixes and stuff if they have a modding community and the modding community will actually be sometimes be very amazing in dealing with uh in making content that sometimes it can reach most developers or like the original developers of a game which is kind of interesting since this actually makes the game last almost forever like for example in there's a game the star wars empire at war if you don't know that game is basically a real-time strategy game set in star wars universe after a long time the game is still being played because of some very dedicated modders that actually rehauled the game made made the game like in an hd version made the game into a more expan expansive campaign units etc it's literally like star wars empire at war 2 or like it's another expansion pack it became so popular and the and the expansion pack was so vast that the developers after a long time actually updated the game to make it easier for modders to actually mod the game and that is a very good set like that's a very concrete example on how uh what do you call this on how games or like not really games or like mods actually make the game last for a long time and that uh and that actually uh also similar to minecraft in the past before the regular updates of minecraft like when it was still owned by uh or like when it still was being developed by a single person or like a small group of people uh what they call this uh, people would actually have like the updates between patches or like versions of minecraft are actually pretty far so how do you think minecraft survived for a long time without very big updates it's a modding community like every like given how minecraft is very easy to mod relatively to other games many people made their own creations made their own maps made their own custom uh, uh mods that make minecraft literally feel like another game and that is pretty hard to pull off given how vast the world of minecraft is like it, it's just very amazing on how these types of games actually uh, what do you call this it's actually a pretty 
Like, for like, it can make the game last for a long time. Example, Skyrim. There are people who mod Skyrim so good that it feels like the, a next generation game. Like, that's the power of mods. The only limit to mods is ha, is the talent or the skill it requires the modders to have. Another example would be the StarCraft Arcade Warcraft. Technically, it's a modification creating custom maps. Not really a very big, like not really a custom mod, but it just allows the game to actually last for a long time. I still know some people who actually play the Origin of Frozen Throne with the custom maps. And wait, before anything else, let's have that. Let's also expand this way. So yeah, as you can see, I so I think that's a very good way to make. If you want to create a game, that's a very good way to actually make the game better. Okay, so here's a also amazing example: RimWorld. Like RimWorld on itself is a very straightforward game, but with very complex mechanics. However, uh, if you want to spice up your game some more, you can actually add some mods to it, like. The amount of mods it has can actually make the game feel different and actually helps the game to feel very uh, what they call this very different. And it's that and it's that uh, and it's that thing that makes mods uh, that allows mods to allow the game to last for a long time. It makes you feel like for example if you're bored with a base game it can make you feel that you're actually doing I mean you're actually playing another game like it can make the game either feel like a better game a worse game it, it's all up to you that's the power of mods so I think uh, petition to have every game mod <laughs> have a mod modding support yeah it's not it's not that easy I know it's not that easy to implement but you know it's just a very nice thing to have especially in games today where people have very strong opinions about games and feel like some games should have like stuff like this stuff like that so i think that is okay i think we're gonna lose never mind so my problem will be a speedy boys in the future the usual problem in tower defense games So yeah, I think those are my two cents on mods. I hope like in the future mods can be easily accessible to or like most games will be easily accept accessible to mods. But yeah, there are some pros and cons about that. But overall, I think making the game last more, making people talk about it more actually will help the game have more publicity and more publicity means more copies sold, more copies sold equals more money. So I think that's a very good pitch or like idea that, you know, make, uh, you know, just make something to help the game last for a long time. So yeah, those are my two cents on it. Fun man, I just want a fire mortar so my damage will be complete. Fire flame, long range ballistics. Okay, I'll take that as well. Can't lie to that. Oh, look at this. It's rain on their parade. Mm hmm. Okay, never mind. I think we're just gonna lose this. If these speedy guys will infiltrate. Okay, we still have a lot of HP, but the question is how many speedy guys will we get through? 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm scared. Help. Help, I'm scared. I think those are more than freaking... Come on. 7. Don't let 7 get through. Come on, come on, come on, come on, save. 
I don't think we will survive the next round. I think we can survive this round, but I don't think we're gonna survive the next round. Uh, we survived, but with 6 HP. Come on, let my mortars, yes, fine, it's in the air rounds. Okay, this is a good spot. You know that expand this way. Also, I think I'm just gonna place. You know what? Let's place a mortar here. No, no, no. You know what? Let's place a mortar here. Okay, speedy guys. Please die. Yeah, they're too fast, man. I can't kill them all. Unless. You target the fastest. Please. Okay, never mind. I'm just dead. One. Like, those are exactly four. And I can't kill those guys. Unless. Yeah, I'm just dead. <laughs> hey, we survived 19 levels with it. That's pretty nice, right? So, yeah, I hope you. I hope you enjoyed the game, even though we did pretty bad. Or not really pretty bad. Hey, at least we enjoyed the game. So yeah, if you enjoyed it, click that like button if you did. Subscribe with more. Put on comment. It helps the algorithm. And I'll see you next time. See ya.